Hey, what's going on guys? Kwame here. Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for checking out this video. So today's video is going to be one of my first guides I'm going to be doing for the Cycle Frontier. Um, this is going to be a beginner's PvP uh, sort of tips guide and I, it's geared towards um, helping newer players and even maybe some moderate level players. Um, some additional tips to help them um, survive their engagements and win their fights and just little things here and there that will help keep them alive in their raids. Also something else that's important to note is that I'm primarily a solo player so all my experience is based on playing solo. I very very rarely do squads or duos so generally speaking all my experience and my tips are going to be based off my solo experience. So um, if you're a solo player in the Cycle Frontier and you're really struggling, then this is definitely going to be one of those videos that's going to help you um, take your game to the next level and help you um, win your fights. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell and all that jazz guys. Much appreciated. Cheers for the support. Feel free to swing by the live stream and say hello sometime. I stream six days a week, Monday through to Saturday at twitch.tv slash Kwame. All other details will be in the description box down below. Now we got all that stuff out of the way, guys. Let's get into it. Okay, let's start. Number one, uh, this is something that happens to everyone in this game. And I feel like this is one of the main reasons why people get killed um, in the cycle. And that is um, to have cover and the importance and how important it is to have cover in this game. Let me show you. There are going to be times when you're just going about your way, you're just walking throughout um, Fortuna and you just run into a player and you're just out in the open and he, he happens to um, just run up on you. And in that moment, you've got a split second decision to, decision, sorry, to decide what you're going to do. Um, most of the time you end up just like fighting, but as you can see here, I ended up running into this player and I was out in the open, but he made it behind cover. I was standing out in the open and he did so much damage to me because he could play... Um, he can play off of his own cover uh, of that rock or pillar or whatever it was that um, that was protecting it. But I was standing out in the open. So he basically won that fight because he got the cover and I didn't. So if you can, always try and have some form of cover. Um, my mistake here was just trying to fight him when I, what I should have done was immediately started sprinting to the rock as well and try and play him um, from that way. Or I should have just completely backed up the second that he, I saw him running to cover and I should have got behind the team and could have played a different game then. But it is what it is, it happens, but that's why cover is so important in this game. All right, tip number two, and this one happens to me quite a bit. I'm gonna talk about the importance of always trying to be at full HP. So there'll be times when you get into fights and you'll get hit and um, you're not sure, really sure what you're supposed to do. And like you've got three quarters HP, for example, and you're not sure if you, sh if you should heal or whatever. My advice to you is to always be on full HP. Always try and use that time to, to get your health to the maximum. So um, it gives you the best chance of surviving. Now in those times when you've got a few seconds to yourself and you're not sure, either whether to go and heal or to move. That will be entirely up to your discretion. If you feel like you need to move, then then go move. But if you've got no HP, then you've got to heal, man. Because the second you get hit by anything, you're just dead. And most people know that when they've got you low, they're just going to charge at you. They're just going to hold, they're going to press down W key, and they're just going to run straight at you, and, and there's nothing you can do about it because you're so low. They've just got to hit you once, and that's the end of that. That's all she wrote. So um, I, in this particular example, um, I, I got in a fight with a two-man squad, I've got a mana core. This guy's got blue armor, blue gear. He basically won this fight against me because I didn't choose to heal. Like, I looked down at my HP and I thought, oh, yeah, it's, it's, I've got enough. But I, reality is I should have healed because right here at the end where he kills me, I would have had just enough HP to finish him off. And um, that would have been my victory. But because I didn't heal, I didn't um, top off to my full HP, he ended up killing me with his mana core as well, even though he's got the blue gear. But... That happens, so my advice to you guys is to always be a full HP at all times, no matter what. Okay, number three. Um, we're going to talk about what to do when you're spotted um, by another player, and he messes you up a lot. So, you're running about, you're doing your own thing, and all of a sudden you just get hit, and you get hit to really low HP. Um, my advice to you guys is when you get spotted, always reposition and flank. Never just stay there, okay? You only stay in the one spot if you absolutely have to. But mobility here is key, so just get the hell out of dodge and heal. Just make sure he can't see you, if possible, and always reposition, because that player, he's gonna go looking for you, most likely, and he's gonna be looking in the area that he last spotted you, and if you're not there, he's gonna be wondering himself where the hell did he go? And then all of a sudden, you do what I did here, so 
this player ran up on me. We, um, he hurt me quite a bit. I ended up uh, backing off completely. I mean, he, I just could not see him in that fog right there. Uh, I backed off completely. He almost got me, and I ended up um, healing to, to max HP, and then I flanked around to where he was, and I ended up shooting him, and I ended up getting the kill on him. So that is what I'm going to tell you guys to do. When you're spotted, reposition, heal up if you got to, and flank. Never under any circumstances, in my opinion, should you stay in the same spot or area that the player last saw you in, okay? Um, this is just bad news. The best thing that you can always do to someone is to always keep them guessing about where you are. This is obviously different from just sitting there in a the bush and just waiting for him to run up on me so I can camp him, alright? I actually made a play, I made a decision, and I acted on that decision. And it worked out for me perfectly, because I ended up flanking him and getting the kill on this player. So, you guys should do the same. Okay, tip number four. We're going to be talking about utility and the use of your utility in this game. So, utility is a big part of uh, PvP in this game, and... Um, you need it to, to not only to attempt to get kills, but it also creates opportunities. And also, um, it gives you a chance to escape um, really dangerous situations when you need to. Like, smoke grenades are very, very useful. I always carry two smoke grenades on me. Um, it's harder to carry um, the frag grenades um, these days because you have to craft them. I generally don't even bother taking them. I usually just take two gas grenades and two smoke grenades. If you want to carry more, then that's up to you. And the best thing about utility is that all of it's useful in some way, shape, or form. I mean, I know that the, the audio grenades aren't that useful, but they can be useful in some situations. So let me give you an example of how um, utility can help you. So this is a situation where I get into a, uh, a fight against a squad of two. Um, I end up killing the first guy and the second player. He's kind of camouflaged here so it was very hard to see him and then he after we exchange shots he runs behind this tree so what i decided to do was was to throw a grenade at him and it, it forced him away from the tree and exposed him and during that time i i um decided to try and kill him and it worked and i ended up getting the kill on this player let me show you guys an, another um couple of examples just really quick ones to show you how important and how you can use utility to your benefit Here's another good one for you guys. Um, do you know there's some rooms, especially small rooms, where there isn't a lot of um, uh, room to move around? Um, if you if you find that there's someone hiding in it or camping in it, um, you can actually throw gas grenades in the room or even just around the outside of the room because the gas will go through the walls and um, <laughs> that player will be... Um, uh, will suffer the consequences and you'll end up killing them because of that. So there's a situation here I noticed that there was a player camping in this room and I didn't really want to push him I didn't know what he had so I just threw some gas grenades in there and then I, I shut the door So he forced him into a corner and then the gas just did its job and killed him But this also would have worked if I threw it on the roof or on the sides of the building It would have worked just the same because the gas goes through walls something to, to think about when you're making your plays against the other players last one on utility um, this is a situation where I got into a fight with the player and he almost killed me So I'm trying to back up to give me uh, some time to heal and what I did was as I'm running away To get some distance so I can heal is I threw a smoke grenade in front of where I was gonna run And then I ran through the smoke grenade and then I also threw uh, An audio decoy grenade towards him and I did that purely because it would kind of um, get him to stop and think, oh, like, what's, what's he doing? What's, what's he throwing at me here? Like, what, what's going on? And just give me an extra couple of seconds to delay him so then I can go and find a safe location so I can heal back to full HP and then re-engage this player. And it worked because I ended up killing him. So, um, just simple things like that can really save your life. Finally. Tip number five. And we're going to be talking about moving your gear to a safer location. So there are times when you get into a fight and you kill a player and you want to grab his gear but it's kind of out in the open and exposed or maybe even somewhere up high where everyone can just see you. Um, it's risky to loot that body as it is just standing there looting um, all the goodies, taking your time or taking this, taking that, whatever. And someone could just um, easily see you from really far away and be like, oh, there's a guy there and just headshot you and then could easily kill you, man. So um, what I suggest is do what I do and that's to drop your bag at a safer location, which is what I do in this clip. Then I quickly go up to the, the, the gear that's on the ground from the dead player. I grab his bag, put it on my back. I put everything in the bag really quickly, uh, whatever I want to take. And then I take that bag to where my bag is and I sort everything all the loot out there where it's safe and no one can kind of just um just shoot me out of nowhere and kill me i can take all the time that i need and i don't feel pressured <laughs> when i'm standing out in the open so this is a really good idea i learned this from escape from tarkov moving the bags with the gear 
and then you can sort out um, all the stuff that you want. Um, this will save your life, without a doubt. Okay, tip number six. This one's going to be talking about the high ground and why it's important. So getting the high ground um, in FPS games, um, it does a lot for you. Um, other than the fact that you can see plays from further away and you can um, get a wider range of a scope to, to see um, the surrounding areas, but it also gives you an opportunity um, to get kills on other players where they might not even uh, realize that you're there. So I decided to go into the tower up here and have a look around and I happened to spot a player who was quite close by to me. And so because I, I did that, instead of just running up in there where he can clearly hear me uh, running around, um, I spotted him first, so then now I can plan my attack against this player, and I know exactly where he is and, and what he's doing. So then I have, just by that, I have a huge advantage over this um, this fight that's coming up here against this player. Because I know where he is, but he's got no clue about where I am, and that he's got no clue that I'm approaching his position, and I'm going to get the jump on him, which is exactly what I do. This player was trying to mine, I believe, and I... I pretty much caught him with his pants down, and then he freaked out, and he, like, he's, he can't do anything, I've just, he's dead now. Like, he, he had no hope, because I pretty much um, caught him in a, in a bad spot. Um, but yeah, that's that's the opportunities that it can provide you by getting the high ground, looking around. Also, when you get into fights and you get the high ground, you can kind of uh, overlook some areas, and you'll be able to spot players easily that way. Okay, tip number seven. Um, this one's going to sound really weird. But let me explain it completely so that um, before you say anything about it. Um, tip number seven is to keep running. And now you're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean keep running? What I mean is there are times and situations in this game where all of a sudden you just get hit to really, really low HP. And then the player just starts chasing you because he knows he's, he's hurt you. He knows he just needs to hit you like once or maybe two more times and you're done. And there's not much you can do about it. So in those situations, you can't fight. You don't have a choice. You have to just keep running. Don't sit there and try and heal when the player just is going to be upon you in a couple of seconds. You have to run. You have to run and back up, get some distance, get him to try and find you and chase you so he's unaware of which direction that you've gone. You need to lose him, basically. And if you don't, he's just going to push you and then kill you if you try and fight your way out of it. And in the cycle frontier, this is something that happens somewhat frequently. I'm going to say. Um, you get hit to really low, you just got to back up, man. Don't try and fight it out when you got low HP. You can never win a fight when you got low HP. Not in this game. Because you need to do so much damage in order to get the kill on the other player. And you can't do that if, if they just got to hit you once and that's the end of that. So, back up. Just keep running. Keep following the five Ds of dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. And just keep running. And then until you got some space and distance between um, the two of you, and that player doesn't know exactly where you are anymore, then use that time to heal. But never just try and fight your way out of it on the spot, because you'll just get dead. And it, this happens a lot. So take my word for it. In those situations, just keep running. Alrighty, tip number eight. In this one, we're going to be talking about shoulder peeking. Um, this is actually the same clip as I did with the bags, but I forgot to talk about the, um, the, the part where I shoulder peeked in order to get this kill on this player. So, we're fighting at the door here, you can see that, and I, I do a quick little shoulder peek and I back up. And the reason why I did that is because I knew this player had a bolty, a bolt action sniper rifle. So I was trying to bait him to, to, to fire it, so then as he's trying to bolt the rifle, I would push in between the two, um, between the two actions. So then, um, as he's bolting, I move up, and now I've, I've closed the distance between us. So that's how I was able to get this kill on this player. This is a great way to, to not only bait shots, but to, um, not expose yourself too much to another player and helps you get vision. So instead of actually standing out there and stopping in the middle of the doorway to see, oh, where is this player? You quickly shoulder peek, just have a quick glance and try and spot him that way. And, and th by doing that, it's a lot safer. It'll protect you more and without having to um, at the risk of getting shot at too much. Okay, moving on to tip number nine. Now this one's a pretty important one because this affects everyone who plays the game. So there are going to be times whether you're solo or you're in a squad, you're going to run into another squad. It's inevitable. It happens, okay? Um, so what you do about that is what's important. Trying to fight a squad of players, um, whether they're very geared or, or very lightly geared, you need to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. Never fight them all at once. If you try to fight them all at once, it'll just overwhelm you and there'll be too much incoming damage and you'll eventually just die, okay? So the best thing that you can do as a player against a squad of players is to try and make 1v1 fights against them. If you try and fight them all at once, you're just going to get dead. Take my word for it, man. It's just, you, you can't do it. 
Um, unless they're really, really bad and they, they just don't hit you or something. But generally speaking, if there's multiple players shooting at you at once, this is too much incoming damage, and doesn't matter what gear you're wearing, it's not going to be able to um, help you survive. It's going to be too much for you, trust me. So, just like in this situation right here, I'm trying to mine and get some um, stuff for my quest, and I run into a two-man squad, and um, we end up getting into a big fight. So, um, I'm, I think at this particular stage, I think I'm in a bit of trouble, because there's two of them, and... But the thing that I do is, I made sure to, to get a one-on-one -on -one fight with both of the players. So I go up to, I get up and I get elevation to fight um, the guy on the left. He peeks me and then we end up exchanging shots and I kill him pretty quickly with the Lancer. Thank God for the Lancer. And then the second player decides to peek me um, after that. And then I ended up um, getting the one-on-one -on -one fight with him and I ended up killing him. But now, before we even got to that stage, um, it's important to note that these players weren't very coordinated with what they what they wanted to do. Um, if they played this better, they, they probably should have killed me in all fairness. But sometimes these things happen and you take advantage of um, the situation and you get the better of it. Sometimes. It does happen. But in most cases, your best bet is to do your best to just get a one-on-one -on -one fight with each of the players. Um, because if you don't, you're just going to end up, they're going to just rush you. Especially if they got shadow guns, man. Of course, they're just going to just sprint at you and they're just going to try and do their best to just hit you. And that's probably going to be the end of that. But yeah, that's the game, unfortunately, at the moment. And it is what it is. Just got to do your best. And I'm um, trying to get those one-on-one -on -one fights. Alrighty, guys. Just a couple more quick tips and then we'll be done and we'll wrap up this video, okay? So, tip number 10. And this one's going to sound strange, but it's going to be take advantage of players. Now, now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? What did you just say? Let me explain. So when I say take advantage of other players, I mean don't forget to third party the other players and take advantage of them getting distracted. For example, one of them, uh, you can run into a player who is fighting um, some, some of the AI, some of the mobs, some of the monsters uh, in, in Fortuna, and he's getting distracted. You can see that he's getting hurt. Like, man, take advantage of that. Go and, go and kill him, okay? Because if you don't do it to them, they're going to 100% do it to you, man, without a doubt. The only time when they don't do it to you is because they're probably another streamer and they want content by talking to another person. But most of the time, they're just going to kill you, man. So if they're going to do it to you, so do it to them. Um, also, take advantage of the fact that players um, are in a fight with another set of players. So that you see a squad fight happening, for example, and um, you want all the gear, which is fine by me. Look for an opportunity to, to go and get them in the back. Like this right here. This, uh, this uh, three-man squad was fighting uh, PvE, and I, I heard that, and I took advantage of that, and I ended up killing them all, all three of them with the Maelstrom. I just ran up on them, and then boom, and they couldn't do nothing about it. So make good use of the opportunities that is presented to you because you might not get another chance, not for a while. Because most of the time, especially when you progress more into the game and people have more gear, they're a lot more, I'm sorry to say it, but they're more try-hardy and they make less mistakes and they play really, real snug and it's hard to catch them off guard ever. So you see in the high MMR games that uh, when someone makes a mistake, people literally just run at them and like push them and try and take advantage of, um, of that fact. It, there's an old saying in Dota that I learned. It's um, when they give you an inch, you take a mile, and it's kind of the same thing here. When they make a mistake, you just go for it and you punish them as much as you possibly can. Okay, tip number eleven, and I'm gonna make this one real simple for you guys. Point firing sucks. So if you come from a game like Escape from Tarkov, like I did, point firing is actually really, really strong. Not in the cycle frontier. Point firing is very inaccurate, and it just goes all over the joint. So. Always, if you can, if possible, to ADS, or in other words, to aim down the sight of your gun, other than point firing, because it is so inaccurate, even though the guy or the player is right in front of you, you could possibly miss the majority of your shots when the player is just right there in front of you. So, it's really annoying, I learned this the hard way, and afterwards people did tell me, like, you, you can't point fire in this game, you, you gotta ADS bro, so I'm like, oh god damn it. Well, now I know. So now I try and do it all the time. So something to think about, something to remember, do your best to not point fire unless you absolutely have to. Okay, last but not least, tip number 12. It's very simple and very straightforward. Be prepared to fight players at your extraction, whether that's extraction campers or when you call on the ship. People can actually hear the sound of the ship coming to... to go for an extraction, and when nearby players hear that, they'll just start sprinting at it to try and kill the players from extracting, to prevent them from extracting so they can grab their gear and whatnot. So, 
During this time, a lot of people tend to let their guard down, and they think because they've called the extraction ship, they're in, they're in the clear. You're not in the clear until you're, you're in the main lobby, man, okay? You're not clear until you're out of the game. So, always be on your guard, always be on your toes, and not to mention, be on the lookout for those extraction campers, because there's a, there's a lot of them who will literally just sit there for ages, just waiting for someone to extract at that particular extraction. So you're always going to be on your guard, on your toes... And so when you call on that extraction, look around, man. Don't just sit there and do nothing and, you know, um, be unaware of what's going on in your surroundings. Because you, you might be like like this team right here who just rolled up on me on a uh, two-man squad. And I ended up killing them. Sure, that's true. I did. But still, this kind of thing can happen. And that's because I was aware and I was looking around to see if anything was, was happening. And I happened to spot them at a reasonable distance where I could defend myself. So I was fortunate in that sense. So I'm telling you guys to be to do the same. Be aware, be prepared to fight people at your extraction, and don't let your guard down until you're out of the game. Because if you don't, it'll be a one-way ticket back to the lobby. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you found this video useful and educational. Um, I hope you, you learned something from this. Just remember, this video is kind of more like friendly advice for me to give to the newer players and also maybe some intermediate level players too. Just things that should help them survive their raids more and win their PvP fights a little bit more. Because um, I know some people, uh, newer players have been struggling and they, they find it very, very difficult, especially to play solo. Trust me, man, I get it. All I do is play solo, so I know exactly what you mean. So hopefully this helps you out just a little bit. Um, in order for you to survive your raid some more. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell and all that jazz guys. Much appreciated. Cheers for the support. Feel free to swing by the live stream and say hello sometime. I stream six days a week, Monday through to Saturday at twitch.tv slash Kwame. All other details will be in the description box down below. Thank you all for watching and remember to keep practicing, keep improving, hang in there, stay Kwame and hopefully I'll see you on the live stream.